Magandang umaga po sa ating lahat. Yes. Ayan, so isa nga pong malakas na balakpak para po sa ating Panginoon. Hallelujah for He deserves our clap offerings. He has always been faithful and especially today na dumami po ang nakikita namin dito sa church. Marami tayo ngayon. Pero though limited lang po yung makapag-attend but still mas nadagdagan po yung joy namin na may mga bagong mukha po tayong kasama ngayon compared dun sa mga nakaraang mga months. Ayan, so... Whew, hallelujah! <laughs> Makikita po natin sa ating mga notes. Ayan, na ang ating pong titles, title ngayong umagang ito ay A Church Blessed for a Thousand Generations. So this is a part two noong teaching po ni Sir Christian Dave last week. Pero ang... Um, focus book po natin, uh, focus chapter po natin is nasa verse, uh, chapter 7 pa rin but on the uh, uh, last ch- verses and the whole chapter 8 po ng Jeremiah. So, um, warning po, dapat po ay, uh, dun, matyagaan nyo po ako ang, ang teaching ko today dahil mahaba-haba po ito. So, bear with me at lalo na may nag-request po na medyo bagalan ko daw po ang aking pagsasalita. So, baka times two yung ating pong haba ng sharing. Ayan. So, wag na po nating patagalin. Alam ko, excited na po kayo. So, let's all together read uh, Jeremiah chapter 7, verses 27 to 34. Therefore, you shall speak all these words to them, but they will not obey you. You shall also call to them, but they will not answer you. So, you shall say to them, This is a nation that does not obey the voice of the Lord their God, nor receive correction. Truth has perished and has been cut off from their mouth. Cut off your hair and cast it away, and take up a lamentation on the desolate heights. For the Lord has rejected and forsaken the generation of His wrath. For the children of Judah have done evil in my sight, says the Lord. They have set their abominations in the house, which is called by my name, to pollute it. And they have built the high places of Tophet, which is in the valley of the son of Hinnom, to burn their sons and their daughters in the fire, which I did not command, nor did it come into my heart. Therefore, behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when it will no more be called Tophet, or the valley of the son of Hinnom, but the valley of his slaughter, for they will bury in Tophet until there is no room. The corpses of these people will be food for the birds of the heaven and for the beasts of the earth, and no one will frighten them away. Verse 34, Then I will cause to cease from the cities of Judah and from the streets of Jerusalem the voice of mirth and the voice of gladness, the voice of bridegroom and the voice of the bride, for the land shall be desolate. Amen. So let's thank God for His Word. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the reading of your Word. And we thank you for uh, you have prepared something for us today. We know and we believe, O oh God, that your blessing is in store for us today, O oh God. And so I pray as your mouthpiece today, may you be with me, O oh Holy Spirit. Come and guide me, and I pray that your word and your word alone, Panginoon, ang akin pong ma-share sa mga kapatid ko sa araw na ito, O God. Mag-hari ka, O Diyos, ito pong aking dalangin sa pangalan ni Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. So, a church blessed for a thousand generations. Last week, our teacher emphasized that what we do now will greatly affect the future generation. And that what this church is doing now will affect the church in the future. So, did we choose to make it a blessed church or did we choose pa rin yung church full of thieves and lies? Only you can answer that. So indeed, what we do now matters. And also, Sir Dave encouraged us last week that we should surrender to God not partially but entirely, not hypocritically but sincerely. And this is for us and for, not just for us, but even for the future generation. So, sabi, nung altar call, sabi niya, what a joyful sight it might be to see a thousand generations after us praising God. Na-imagine niyo po ba? Para answer up sa feeling. Woo! Lalo na when 
this generation ay galing po, alam mong galing sa'yo. Alam mong because of you, this generations na sumunod ay pupatungo din sila sa tamang landas. And that is the way to the Lord. Amen. So it will also be a joyous sight that this church still stands praising the Lord. Amen. Ayan. So, mara- marahil po or malamang, last week, maraming single dyan ang biglang na-excite na, ay, parang gusto ko na magkaanak. Lalo na yung mga engaged to, the mar- to be married. Mga gusto nilang next week na yung kasal. Yung mga ganun. O, oh, may reaction dyan. Ayan. So, ayun, uh, wag, kay- wag po kayong magalala. Hindi ako nandito para um, i-quench yung, ka- yung excitement. But I am here, I believe, Your, the word of the Lord is here for us today to guide us towards this, um, itong gusto nat, itong, itong, itong future na ating nga pong finoforsi. Ayan. At sa mga dati nang pong may mga anak, syempre, ma, lalo na kung mga 60s na, eh, medyo imposible na po na mag, magkaroon pa na another set of new generations from us, di ba? So, Let this be a reminder to each and every one of us. At sa mga ministers din, sa mga, kung may mga ibang pastors din na nakikinig sa araw na ito, sa, sa ibang churches or saan man, I, this, may this serve also as a reminder for all of us. Ayan, so going back doon po sa ating binasa, kanina sa verse 27 to 29 ng chapter 7, sabi dito, Therefore, you shall speak all these words to them, but they will not obey you. You shall also call to them, but they will not answer you. So you shall say to them, This is a nation that does not obey the voice of the Lord their God, nor receive correction. Truth has perished and has been cut off from their mouth. Cut off your hair and cast it away. And take up a lamentation and a desolate highs for the Lord has rejected and forsaken the generation of His wrath. So, with our excitement to, fu- to see the future generation, sana ganun din po yung excitement natin to establish the truth ng Panginoon sa ating mga buhay. Amen. Na ang truth ng Panginoon ang siya din pong establish for the future, for the next generation. after us. And a thousand, we claim for a thousand generation after us. So wag po sana tayong maging tulad ng mga Israelites. Sabi dyan, Jeremiah, kausap, kakausapin mo ang mga Israelita. Kakausapin mo ang mga taga-Juda, pero hindi sila makikinig sa'yo. Tatawag ka sa kanila, pero hindi sila sasagot. For they will not obey. Ito ang sabi ng Panginoon. Sana hindi po tayo katulad ng mga taga-Juda. So, Sa dami na po ng teachings na natanggap natin, sa dami na ng paalala at pagtawag na, na na-receive natin, sumunod po ba tayo? Sumagot po ba tayo? So sa turo po last week, ilan po ba dun ang tinanggap natin? At ilan po dun ang nag po tayo sa Panginoon? Marami po yun. So have we forsaken the lying words? Take this time to uh, reflect. So parang review po tayo kasi this is the part two of the teaching last week. So i-review po natin yung last week. Have we forsaken the lying words? Tulad ng okay lang magkasala ngayon, magsisimba naman ako sa Sunday. Okay lang gumawa ng mali ngayon, magsusorry na lang ako kay Lord. So have we re- rejected delusion that hardens our heart? Natanggal na po ba natin yung hashtag feeling righteous? Have we found shame on our sins? O taas na o at kapal mukha pa rin tayo? Have we made our ways better? Have we become just and honest? Completely and not partially. Sincerely and not hypocritically. Is our justice and honesty constant and unwa- unwavering? Let's ask ourselves. Ito po yung mga natutunan natin last week. At dun sa example, pumipila na po ba tayo ng tama? Ayan. Were we able to keep our identity 
as a chil- as a child of God and as children of God. One week lang po pa lang po ang lumilipas. So can we assess na we were able to to, to keep our identity as children of God o naging reliant ka pa rin sa anong meron ka. Na kapag walang kapag na-delay yung sahod, oh, wala na si Lord sa akin. Oh, ganun masyad mga OA na. Okay, so or may madumating lang ng pagsubok eh nawawala na yung focus mo sa Panginoon. So, did, are we able to lose not our true God? Have we stopped wandering after other gods? And are we able to stand on our faith sa Panginoon? Dami kong tanong, di ba? Sagutin po ninyo yan sa inyong mga sarili. And that you can assess, how have you responded sa word ng Panginoon last week? Anong level ng obedience ang meron po tayo towards the Lord? Sabi niya, thou shall not be an equally yoke with unbelievers. Sinong boyfriend mo ngayon? Sinong girlfriend mo ngayon? Sabi ng Panginoon, huwag kang mga ngalunya. Saan ka umuwi? Sinong inuuwian mo? Our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Ano po bang ginagawa natin sa templo ng Panginoon? Sabi niya, thou shall not steal. O sa mga estudyante ngayon, siguro di, wala nang makakakopya kasi, wala nang makakopya kasi online, di ba? So, medyo abselto kayo dito. Pero paano kapag nag-resume na yung mga classes? Shall you, will you not steal anymore? So, do we now possess a teachable heart? As children, do we listen to our parents? As cell members, do we still honor our cell leaders. So church, do we really listen to our pastors? Are you really listening to me today? Yeah, no. And church church leaders and members, do we really listen to God's conviction? So, siguro you can by yourself, you can rate or i-rate nyo po yung sarili nyo 1 to 10. Ano po bang level ng teachable heart meron ka? Okay? So, do we no longer use grace as a license to sin? Have we decided to choose being a better generation after us or choosing to see a better generation after us by making wise decisions today? Only you can answer that. But I pray and I claim na hindi naman po siguro tayo tulad ng mga Israelites. That they, li- they hear from Jeremiah but they do not actually listen. They do not respond. Okay? So, tulad po ning, uh, tulad ng paulit-ulit na pagtuturo po ni Jeremiah, kahit alam niya namang hindi makikinig yung mga Israelita sa kanya, ay paulit-ulit din po tayong paaalalahanan ng salita ng Panginoon. But are we willing to listen? Lahat po ng willing makinig sa salita ng Panginoon ay sumigaw ng Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So, kaya pa po ba? Umpisa pa lang po ito. Review pa lang po yung ating ginawa. So, nasa intro pa lamang po tayo. And basahin po natin yung intro dyan. Sabi dyan sa inyong notes, When you fail to listen and obey God's word, truth ceases to exist in your life. Bakit meron po yung mga ayaw ng tumanggap ng katotohanan? Dahil tumigas na po ang kanilang mga puso. Alam mo namang nakakasama ang paglalasing. Sabi ng anak mo sa'yo, pa, wag ka maglalasing. Pero maglalasing ka pa rin. Tapos, maalala ko yung sa morning word and prayer ni Pastor Dan, na-example niya yun eh. Meron pa yung... Utusan pa nila yung mga anak nila bumili ng sigarilyo o magsindi ng sigarilyo o unang hit-hit sa anak. Diba? We know this is wrong. Pero bakit kaya meron yung ginagawa pa rin nila? Kasi nakasanayan na. Pero ang nakasanayan nila ay mali. Ang nakasanayan natin ay mali. So anong henerasyon po ang expect natin na susunod sa atin? Henerasyong mali din. At sabi sa so verse 29, 
Cut off your hair and cast it away, and take up a lamentation in the desolate heights, for the Lord has rejected and forsaken the generation of Israel. Anong generation po ang susunod sa atin kung ganito po tayo? It is a generation of God's wrath. A generation who God will reject and who God will forsake. Itatakwil ng Panginoon. Sabi dito, cut off your hair and cast it away. Casting off the hair or shaving off the hair is Uh, it symbolizes mourning. It is a sign of mourning, especially nung time ng mga Israelites. And natawa po ako kasi bigla ko naalala, bakit yung mga nabobroken hearted nagpapabangs? Siguro sabi ko, ah, ganun ba yun? Dahil ba nagmamourn sila, kaya sila nagpapabangs? Ay, hindi ko alam. Anyway, uh, sabi din dito, lament on the high places. To lament means to mourn. Ganun din, mag, uh, magluksa, mourn aloud. And to regret strongly. So let us regret strongly na sa mga kasalanan po natin. Let us lament for the Lord has reject, rejected and forsaken this generation. Kasi is, we try to assess. We hear the news. Ano po ba nakikita natin sa Facebook din? Ano po bang napapansin natin sa paligid natin ngayon? Can we say that this generation is a generation that sabi ni Lord, very good, mga anak. Very, very good. Or malapit-lapit na tayo din sa generation of God's wrath. Do you think God is being pleased sa atin po? Sa atin na lang. Okay? Sa atin pa lang. I-assess natin. So sabi, wala po dyan sa points, pero let us lament and let us mourn for the sins of this generation. Let us lament, you, may you lament for, your, for yourself and for your family. To mourn and to regret strongly sa mga kasalanan. Let me just share. I was blessed nung Wednesday kasi nagkaroon po ng prayer meeting sa bahay. ba? Diba? After ng prayer meeting dito, movie ako. Pagdating ko doon, prayer meeting ulit talaga naman. Lord. Hmm. Okay, so I was about, actually I was about to prepare this sermon sana. But in my spirit, ay parang may nagtatawag sa akin to join them. I hear them singing. I hear, talagang sige, gusto kong gusto kong magkipag, makasama sila mag-worship sa Panginoon. So I did. And I heard wonderful wonderful hearts in prayers. Not just prayers, but those were cry in the hearts. Their hearts. Rachel was praying for her family's salvation. Yung mga yung pamangkin ko si Gordy and yung pinsan niya, ay yung pinsan ko si IJ, he prayed for they prayed for their parents and it was wonderful. My auntie Del, alam ko nanonood ka nanonood ka mamaya. She prayed not just for her husband and her only son, but she prayed naming all her nephews isa-isa. Sa dami naming magpipinsan. Inisa-isa din niya lahat ng mga apo. Matindi po siya magpray. And I was so amazed. Inisa-isa din niya lahat ng pinsan niya. O, ganun. Very powerful. They cried to God not just, but they cried to God not just for our family, but for everyone. Rachel and Auntie Chris prayed for all the sick. Papa prayed for the body of Christ, not just the 611 church. And what amazed me, what amazed me the most was the simple cry of one nephew of mine. He stood in behalf of the youth admitting the sin of pornography and lamented and repented on behalf of every youth. So humbling and powerful. Ilan pa po ba sa atin ang kayang i-admit ang ating kasalanan and to stand in behalf of other people whom we know, alam naman natin na nakakagawa din ng ganitong kasalanan. So ilan pa ba sa atin ang nakakatangis para sa iba? Ilan po ba sa atin ang tumatangis para sa kasalanan na nakikita natin evident sa so, dito na lang po sa ating bansa. Or katulad lang tayo ng iba na we just shrug our shoulders off. So, do we still lament? Do we still cry? May bat, meron pa rin po ba yung battle cry natin para sa ating bansa? 
Sorry po, madami akong tanong. Pala tanong talaga ako. But these are for each and every one of us to reflect and to assess ourselves. Because why, and in this sa ating pong inaaral, why is God in wrath? Bakit po galit na galit ang Panginoon? Makikita po natin yan sa verses 30 to 33. Babasahin ko po sa Tagalog para mas, mas ramdam na ramdam po natin, mas clear. Sabi dito, napakasama ng ginawa ng mga taga-Juda. Ang mga Diyos-Diyosang kinasusukluman ko ay inilagay nila sa aking templo. Nilapastangan nila ang aking tahanan. Ako si Yahweh ang may sabi nito. Sa libis ng Benhinom ay gumawa sila ng altar na tinawag nilang Tophet. Doon nila sinusunog ang kanilang mga anak bilang handog. Hindi ko ito iniutos sa kanilang gawin ito at ni hindi man lamang ito sumagi sa aking isipan. Dahil dito, darating ang panahon na hindi na iyon tatawaging tofet o libis ng Benhinom, kundi libis ng kamatayan. Magiging isang libingan ang tofet sapagkat wala ng lugar na mapaglilibingan. Ang mga bangkay ay kakanin ng mga ibon at maiilap na hayop upang sino mang makapagtataboy, walang sino mang makapagtataboy sa kanila. At sasalantain ko ang buong lupain hanggang ito'y maging isang disyerto. Hindi na maririnig sa mga lunsod ng Juda at sa mga lansangan ng Jerusalem ang mga himig ng kagalakan at katuwaan. Hindi na mapapakinggan ang masasayang tinig ng mga ikakasal. Sabi dito, napakasama ng ginawa ng mga taga-Juda. Ang Diyos-Diyos ang kinasusuklaman ko ay inilagay nila sa aking templo. Kumbaga sa mag-asawa eh, iniuwi mo yung kabit mo na nandun, dun sa bahay. Tama, di ba? Because the sin of idolatry is a sin of adultery. So ganito ang ginawa ng Judah. Kaya, ano, kaya ngayon po marila sa bakit galit na galit ang Panginoon. Bakit God is in wrath? Maalala, babasahin po natin ang Exodus. Yan. Paki-flash, Exodus chapter 20, verses 2 to verse, verses 2 to 6. Sabi dito, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself a curved image any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them nor serve them for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children to the third and fourth generations of those who hate me. And verse 6, but showing mercy to thousands, to those who love me, and keep my commandments. Number one command ng Panginoon, ako lang, ako lang ang Diyos. And do not make graven images. Pero ano po ang ginawa nila? Yun po yung binasa natin kanil sa verse 30. This is their sin of idolatry. Kaya nga po ang first point po natin dyan is, stop idol worship. Stop doing what is evil in the sight of God. Nung nagturo po sa ati Jen, gusto ko yung definition niya ng idol. Sabi niya, whom you spend most of your time and invest most of your resources instead of God, more than God, this is your idol. Sa akin naman ang dagdag ko, oh, may dagdag ko. What makes you compromise your relationship to God? Yung isinaalang-alang mo na yung relationship mo sa Panginoon. Para lang dito, this is an idol. I was also, this is a very good reminder sa akin kasi sa atin sa atin lang. Pero uh, last week, this week kasi ay sabi ng boss ko, uh, ipinaprepare na daw nila yung, pwede ka ba i-reveal? Ayan, yung promotion ko daw for next year. <laughs> Ayan. But then, This is a reminder to me ng Panginoon na 
it doesn't mean na I will focus on that promotion. Na kapag ano, ano man ang sasabihin ng boss ko sa akin, dahil syempre, nasa boss yan eh, nakasalalay din yan. Ay, ano man yung sabihin niya, kahit i-compromise ko na ang katotohanan ng Panginoon ay gagawin ko. No. I will not make my promotion my idol. Not even my profession. So, ganun din po sa atin. Baka yung iba sa atin, mahilig mag-inom ang boss, eh, kailangan kapit. Kikiinom ka na din. This is wrong. This is idolatry. Or di kaya, sabi ko, di ba kanina, whom you spend most of your time. Ngayon, nasa, tanong ko sa mga nasa church ngayon, nandito po kayo sa church ngayon, but are you really spirit in spirit and in truth and your soul is really in the Lord? Nakafocus po ba tayo sa salita ng Panginoon ngayon? Because if it's not, medyo mag-isip-isip na po tayo. Or kayo pong nakikinig ngayon sa mga bahay-bahay ninyo. Are you really giving this time for the Lord? Or baka nandyan, may, may iba po po tayong ginagawa. Nakikinig nga tayo, pero iba po yung, because God is a jealous God. Wag mong pagsabayin. Kung mag-serve ka sa Panginoon, mag-serve ka sa Panginoon. Kung nakikinig ka ng salita niya, makinig ka ng salita niya. Okay? So let us forsake idol worship. At tulad nung sa intro ko kanina, marami sa atin, di ba? Marami sa inyo. Sorry. Na, siguro na excited to have their own family. But, kung ngayon pa lamang po, especially for the singles, ngayon pa lamang na single ka na hindi mo maibigay yung best time mo for the Lord, how much more pag may family ka na? Baka wala ka nang ibang gagawin kundi para sa family lang. And that is again, idol worship. So sabi dun sa morning word and prayer ni Pastor Dan noon, be prepared for the future. Kaya naman po, kaya sabi ko sa inyo, this teaching will also help us and will guide us towards dun sa gusto natin, dun sa mga nagpo-foresee ng future for their own families, for the generation na galing mismo sa kanila. So kung ngayon, yun nga yung sabi ko, kung ngayon pa lamang, wala kang time for the Lord, paano na lang kung may family ka na? So, ngayon pa lamang po, i-prepare na po natin yung ating mga sarili. So, is the Israelites, their sin was so great that, that actually, in verse 32, or in verse 31, mababasa po natin dyan, that they burned their sons and their daughters in fire. Which actually, hindi naman po kinuman ng Panginoon. At actually, never pong naisip ng Panginoon na gagawin nila yun. Nor did it come into His heart. Last week, na-emphasize po din na obedience is better than sacrifice. God is not pleased dun sa ginagawa nilang sacrifice. Kau ba naman, anak mo? na yun yung sacrifice mo na hindi naman sinabi ng Panginoon. Hindi po yun na pleasing sa Panginoon. So kung ano po ang gusto ni Lord nagawin natin, yun po yung gawin natin. Hindi natin kailangan mag-sacrifice. Gawin lang po natin kung anong pinapagawa ng Panginoon. Meron ako note dito, sabi ko, ngay- ngayon pa lamang umayos na po tayo. Huwag kang mag-aanak kung, magsasa- kung isasakripisyo mo lang din naman pala ang mga anak mo pagdating ng panahon. Sa so verse 32, ito po yung medyo nakikin, ay, nakakakilabot na ano. Sabi niya dito, Therefore, behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when it will no more be called Tophet or the valley of the son of Hinnom, but the valley of his slaughter, for they will bury in Tophet until there is no room. Grabing no room for mapaglilibingan. Kasi gano'n na po, magiging land of slaughter na po siya. Ang Tophet. Because ganito po ang na-consume, ng, ang, na, na-consume po ng wickedness ang bayan po ng Israel or ang Judah. 
na even in verse 33, sabi dyan, and no one will frighten them away. Kapag, ah, sabi dyan, the curse of these people will be food and birds of the heaven, and food for birds, for the birds of the heaven, and for the beasts of the earth, and no one will frighten them away. Walang pong magsasabing, ano yun? Iwan, uh, i- walang magtataboy dun sa mga, dun sa mga ibon, walang magtataboy dun sa mga, sa mga beast na lalapa dun sa mga, tawag dun? Sa mga katawan. Ayan. So, ganun na din, ganun po sila kakonsume ng kanilang pong kasalanan na even po yung humanity ay mawawala na. Di ba po sa atin, Di ba po sa atin kapag uh, kapag may namatay, we want the kahit namatay na we want to give the best na na paglilibing yung maayos kumbaga na paglilibing. Pero sa kanila, ganito po yung nangyari, nawala na. Okay? Hinayaan na lang po nila, wala na silang pakialam. Yan, so moving on. Medyo marami po akong points, sorry. So then I will, verse 34, sabi to, Then I will cause to cease from the cities of Judah and from the streets of Jerusalem the voice of mirth and the voice of gladness, the voice of the bridegroom and the voice of the bride. For the land shall be desolate. So makikita po natin dyan, yung point letter A ko dyan, future generation will be of non-existence. Kasi sabi dito, wala na pong boses. Wala kang maririnig ng celebration. Wala nang i- boses ng bride, wala nang boses ng groom. Kasi wala nang kasal. So wala na socialization. Para na, napaisip ako actually dito sa COVID. Na di ba, na, do, yung iba na postpone lang, push pa rin nila. Ganun. Pero yun nga po, if we don't stop our idol worship, ito ang mangyayari. Sabi dito, is A future gener- sa point letter ko, future generation will be of non-existence. Ayan, so, kung wala na pong kasal, walang mag-aanak, wala na din po yung claim natin ng a church blessed for a thousand generations. ba? Diba? At kung siguro sabi nila, pwede na mong mag-anak na walang kasal. O, diba, maraming nangyayari ganun. But sabi nga dito, for the land shall be desolate. Alam nyo po ang mangyayari, we will be desolated. Hindi siya desolate na wala ng tao actually. Desolated in terms na iiwan na tayo ng Panginoon. Kung ganito po, kung ganun po yung mangyayari. So let us stop idol worship lest future generation will be of non-existence. Next point. So verse 8 as a chapter 8 verses 1 to 2. Sabi dito, Basahin ko po. At that time, says the Lord, they shall bring out the bones of the kings of Judah and the bones of its princes and the bones of the priests and the bones of the prophets and the bones of the inhabitants of Jerusalem out of their graves. They shall spread them before the sun and the moon and all the hosts of heaven which they have loved and they have served and after which they have walked, which they have sought and which they have worshipped. They shall not be gathered nor buried. They shall be like refuse on the face of the earth. Grabe po, no? These are the people, these are the kings, the princes, the priests, the prophets, the inhabitants of Jerusalem. Yung mga taong they used to honor, they used to follow, and even, sabi dito, inhabitants of Jerusalem. So kahit mga kamag-anak po nila, na defile na, Hinaya, eh, ayun, nilabas po. Sabi ko kasi, uh, kanina, di ba, kapag sa atin, we, even the, yung katawan nung namatay, eh, we still, uh, we, in honor, uh, in honor, hindi naman, in a way na sinasama. I mean, hindi po natin dinidisrespect. Okay? And, but dito, ganito po yung nangyari. Inilabas po nila lahat yung mga bones na yan, ikinalat nila. Kasi ang sinas, pinag, ang worship nila is the sun, and the moon, and all the hosts of heaven. Kasi ito na yung, parang, kumagisugul ginawa nilang alay or what. Okay? 
And sabi tito, they shall not be gathered nor buried. They shall be like refuse on the face of the earth. And so, that brings us to point B, to letter B, that the past generation be defiled. Even yung mga nauna ng generasyon ay na-defile. Nawala na sila ng honor dahil sa pangyayari pong ito. So let us stop idol worship. Let A, future generation be of non-existence, and B, the past generation be defiled. And ito po yung pinaka mabigat. Verse 3, Then death shall be chosen rather than life by all the residue of those who remain of this evil family, who remain in all the places where I have driven them, says the Lord, Lord of hosts. That even the present generation will choose death. Ikaw ba naman, puro kamatayan na lang yung nasa paligid mo? Matay na, matay na, matla, na, naklatan. <laughs> Tama ba? Okay? So, hindi pala siya nakakatawa. Naka, ans, ang nakakilabot po isipin na wala na ang susunod na generasyon. Wala na susunod, actually, wala na susunod na generasyon kasi they will choose death. And sabi dyan, sabi dun sa verse 3, this evil family. Siguro naman, di, or sana naman hindi po tayo ito. Sana naman we don't belong to this evil family who will choose death rather than life. And so what should we do? It all boils down to the number one command of the Lord. Let us stop idol worship. Hindi lang po to graven images, but tulad po nung napag, yung shinare ko kanina. This we must stop. So let's move on to our second point. Roman numeral 2. Verse, let me read verses 4 to 6. Moreover, you shall say to them, Thus says the Lord, Will they fall and not rise? Will one turn away and not return? Why has these people slidden back Jeruz Jerusalem in a, in a perpetual backsliding? They hold fast to the seat. They refuse to return. I listened and heard. But they do not speak aright. No man repented of his wickedness, saying, What have I done? Everyone turned to his own course as the horse rushes into battle. Sabi dito, Why has these people slidden back? Jerusalem in a perpetual backsliding. So my forever po si Jerusalem. Because perpetual means forever. Buti po siya my forever. Nga lang, Ayoko po ng ganitong forever. Gusto nyo ba? Ayaw. Okay, very good. Okay, so, sabi ni Ruth noon, nung nagturo siya, be careful because backsliding is contag contagious. This is true. Okay, so, tayo po na mga anak ng Panginoon, tayo na nakakakinig, nakakarinig ng salita ng Panginoon, let us be careful and let us take a strong stand. Because backsliding is contagious. So be careful leaders, parents, be careful of what you show to your children. Because kung ano po yung pinapakita natin, nasasagap po nila yan. Nako, nako, uh, na, yeah, it's contagious. Okay? So, that brings us to point number two, return to God. Let us return to God. Tama na po ang paulit-ulit na pagtalikod natin sa Panginoon. One time, big time, bumalik na po tayo sa Panginoon. And let us pray the right prayer. Hindi yung puro hingi lang, puro hingi lang. Kasi sabi dito, they do not speak aright. Siguro, ewan ko kung anong pinagpipray ng mga taga-Jerusalem noon. But sabi ng Panginoon, they do not speak aright. Bakit? Because no one repented of their wickedness. At wala nagsasabing, anong nagawa ko? Maalala ko po yung sabi ni Pastor Joshua that there is no bottom for repentance and humility. Tama ba? There is no ceiling for praise and thanksgiving and there is no bottom for repentance for humility. 
So let us pray the right prayer sa Panginoon. Let us check our hearts. Ano pa po ba yung hindi natin nahihingi ng tawad sa Panginoon? Malala ko yung sabi ni Pastor Danny. Baka yung pagnanakaw mo ng kalabaw pa lang ang nahihingi mo ng tawad sa Panginoon. So, second point. Let us know God's judgment. Sabi sa verse 7, Even the stork in the heavens knows her appointed times, and the turtle dove, the swift, and the sh- swallow observe the time of their coming, but my people do not know the judgment of the Lord. Buti pa daw yung mga ibon, alam nila ang kanilang oras. Pero ang mga anak ng Panginoon, they do not know God's judgment. John chapter 3, verse 18, He who believes in Him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son. This is the word of the Lord. So we must believe in the name of the only begotten Son, and that name is Jesus. Sabi dito, he who believes in Him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned. This is God's judgment. Romans 6, verse 23, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. This is God's judgment. And ito po yung gusto kong i-share na... Na, nakaka-bless po kasi yung ang, ang, ang church po natin ay 611 Breath of Life Christian Church. So ang ating kong vision ay actually nakafocus sa Isaiah 61 verse 1. But if we read the whole chapter 61, mas mabe-bless po kayo. And na, itong, itong uh, paki-flash po yung Isaiah 61 verses 8 to 9. Sabi dito, For I the Lord love justice. I hate robbery for burnt offering. I will direct their work in truth and will make with them an everlasting covenant. Their descendants shall be known among the Gentiles and their offspring among the people. All who see them shall acknowledge them that they are the posterity whom the Lord has blessed. Amazing ang salita ng Panginoon, di ba? But God's judge- judgment is this. God loves justice, but He doesn't love or He hates robbery for burnt offering. Pero ang sabi niya, I will make them and kaya po, everyone who, if you lo- if God loves justice, and so we also love justice, ito po ang gagawin ng Panginoon, our descendants shall be known among the Gentiles, and our offspring among the people, and all who see us shall acknowledge that we are the posterity whom the Lord has blessed. So let us always consider and let's also always take in heart ang judgment po ng Panginoon and this will guide us and this will bring us dito po sa title natin at Church Blessed for a Thousand Generations. And sinusuport po yan ng salita ng Panginoon. Let us know God's judgment and let us see, let us not reject the word of the Lord. For behold, for verse 8, how can you say we are wise and the law of the Lord is with us? Look, the false pen of the scribe certainly works falsehood. The wise men are ashamed. They, they are dismayed and taken. Behold, they have rejected the word of the Lord. So what wisdom do they have? So let us not be wise in our own knowledge. Let us be wise in God's truth. Let us not reject God's truth. Let us get wisdom from the Lord. Kaya sabi dito, they have Behold, they have rejected the word of the Lord. So what wisdom do they have? Sarili mo na lang yan. Isip, isip mo. Alam ko po la, ang Panginoon ay nangungusap sa atin sa oras na ito. Sabi ng Proverbs 9 verse 10, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. So let us receive or let us exercise the fear of the Lord. And so we shall have this wisdom. We shall have understanding. And we shall be wise if we have the word of the Lord. So let us return to God and let us pray right the right prayer. Let us know God's judgment. And let us not reject the word of the Lord. 
Let us fear the Lord. If this fear of the Lord ay ma-establish po natin, at ang fear of the Lord din na ito ang maipapasa natin on the next generation, oh, how beautiful will it be. Amen. Yes, and everyone will be wise in the wisdom of the Lord. Now, uh, so verse 10 to 11, Therefore, I will give their wives to others and their, fear, their fields to those who will inherit them. Because from the least, even to the greatest, everyone is given to covetousness. From the prophet, even to the priest, everyone deals falsely. For they have healed the hurt of the daughter of my people slightly, saying, Peace, peace, when there is no peace. Gusto ko pong basahin siya sa Tagalog. Sabi dito, Kaya ibibigay ko sa iba ang kanilang mga asawa. Ang kanilang bukid ay tatamnan ng ibang tao. Ang lahat, dakila man o aba, ay gumagamit ng pandaraya upang yumaman. Pati mga propeta at mga pari ay nandaraya. Hindi nila pansin ang kahirapan ng aking bayan. Ang sabi nila, payapa ang lahat, gayong wala namang kapayapaan. Sabi ng Panginoon, ibibigay ko sa iba ang kanilang mga asawa. Because they have rejected the truth. They have rejected the word of the Lord. Even yung meron na sa kanila ay kukuni ng Panginoon. The Lord will take away everything from you and for your future generation. Kasi sabi niya, even yung field, ito na lang, kumbaga inheritance sana ng next generation. Pero ibibigay ng Panginoon sa iba because they put away truth. The Lord will take everything from you and from your gener future generation if you put away the truth of the Lord from you. At sabi, and gusto ko lang pong i-add dito, sabi sa verse... 11, hindi nila pansin ang kahirapan ng aking bayan. Ang sabi nila, payapa ang lahat, gayong wala namang kapayapaan. So please let us recognize the need of the people. Sa family, ano po ba yung need ng mga anak ninyo? Ano po ba yung need ng mga parents? Let us recognize. I believe everyone needs the love from each other, especially inside the family. So let us recognize this and may we be able to give this. Kasi it's also part of our response sa salita ng Panginoon. And that's my, that's point number two. Let us return to God. Return to His truth. Return to God. Wag po tayong couple mooks. Sabi ko dito. Sa, sa third point natin, humble yourself. Verse 12, when, were, they, were they ashamed when they have committed abomination? No, they were not at all ashamed. Nor did they know how to blush. Therefore, they shall fall among those who fall in the time of their punishment. They shall be cast down, says the Lord. Grabe po ang Super na consume na ng kasalanan ang mga Israelites na hindi na po sila nahiya. Hindi sabi dito, they, nor did they know how to blush. Yun nga po, kapal moks sa mga kasalanan. Sana hindi po tayo ganito. Let us learn to humble ourselves in the Lord. Or else, lest God will cast us down. Let us not harden our face and let us not make our hearts numb. Or lest God will consume us. So verse 13, I will consume them, says the Lord. No grapes shall be on the vine, no figs on the fig tree, and the leaves shall fade, and the things I have given them shall pass away from them. Let us humble ourselves lest God will consume us and we become unfruitful and without use, that even what we have will be taken away from us. At kung babasahin po natin ang verses 14 to 17, basahin ko po. 
mas maganda pong basahin natin. Sabi dito, bakit tayo nakaupo at walang ginagawa? Tanong nila. Halina kayo, tayo ay magta magtago sa mga lungsod na matibay at doon na tayo mamamatay. Hinatulan na tayo ni Yahweh at ng ating Diyos upang mamatay. Binigyan niya tayo ng tubig na may lason upang inumin sapagkat nagkasala tayo sa Kanya. Naghintay tayo ng kapayapaan, ngunit walang nangyari. Umasa sa kaligtasan, ngunit kakilakilabot na nahirap ang dumating sa atin. Naririnig hanggang sa lunsod ng daan ang ingay ng mga kabayo ng kaaway, nanginginig na sa takot ang buong bayan, bansa sa habag pa lamang, sa yabag, yap, yabag pa lamang ng mga kabayong pandigma. Dumating na ang wawasak sa ating lupain, at sa lahat ng naroon sa ating lunsod at sa lahat ng naninirahan doon. And verse 17, humanda kayo, sabi ni Yahweh. Magpapadala ako ng mga ahas na makamandag, mga ulupong na hindi magmapapaamo upang kayo'y tuklawin. So makikita po natin dito, aware naman po pala sila of God's judgment. Aware din naman pala sila na nagkasala sila. Pero ano po bang ginawa nila? Wala, tinanggap na lang nila. Tara na lang dun, mamatay. Dun tayo mamatay. Ganito po yung naging response po nila. Instead of humbling themselves sana, instead of repenting, ganun lang po yung naging reaction nila. And so verse 18 to 19, sabi dito, hindi mapapawi ang nadarama kong kalungkutan, nagdurugo ang aking puso, sabi ni Jeremiah. Pakinggan ninyo, naririnig ko ang iyakan ng buong bayan. Wala na ba sa Zion si Yahweh? Wala na ba roon ang hari ng Zion? At sumagot si Yahweh. Bakit ninyo ako ginagalit? Bakit kayo sumasamba sa mga Diyos-Diyosan na hindi ninyo kilala at wala namang kabuluhan? So makikita po natin dito, Actually, nakikipag-usap pa rin si pa ang Panginoon sa kanila. God is still responding to them. God is still listens to them. Pero sila po yung hindi nakikinig. So verse 20, that the harvest is past, the summer is ended, and we are not saved, sabi nila. So, because they do not listen, time passed away from, for, from them without them receiving the blessing. Sana hindi po tayo, hindi po mangyari sa atin yun. Na dahil wala po tayong ginagawa, o oh, alam ko na makasaw na, o oh, yan, makasalanan ako, o oh, okay na, accept ko na. Ganun. But you do not repent. Sana po, hindi mo dumating yung time na lumipas na lang yung blessing sana for us. Yung tinatawag na retroactive blessing, once we, once na we acknowledge our sinfulness before the Lord, mayroon siyang retroactive blessing na ibibigay sa atin once we return sa Kanya. So sana po hindi ito lilipas sa atin na hindi po natin natatanggap. And the last two verses, yan, patapos na po. For the hurt of the daughter of my people, I am hurt. I am mourning. Astonishment has taken hold of me. Is there no bound in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Why then is there no recovery for the health of the daughter of my people? Sabi dito, is there no balm in Gilead? So ang Gilead po ay lugar kung saan nakukuha yung balm na, yun nga, balm na very precious. Ito po ay niresearch ko. Sabi niya, it's a gum from a wood with medicinal quality. So parang dagta. Dagta po ng isang punong kahoy na ang use po niya is for medicine. Kaya pala naghahanap po sila ng wala na bang balm, wala na bang medicinal balm dyan para gumaling ang Israel? Or sabi dito, wala na bang physician? Is there no physician there? Diba? Ano, ano na yung hinahanap nila? But actually, they have a physician there na sinugo ng Panginoon. They actually have Jeremiah. Actually, chinek up niya sila. Oh, eh, check up. Oh, ito ang sakit mo ang kasalanan mo. May findings siya si Jeremiah at nagbigay siya ng reseta. Pero hindi naman sila nakinig. There was healing for them 
but because of their stupidity. This medicine was not made use, and yung physician, wala. Nawalan ng sense yung pagiging physician niya. Hindi naman sila nakinig. So, hurt was, health was not restored for Jerusalem, or for, for the Israelites. And sa atin, sa time po natin ngayon, ano po ba yung balm na meron tayo? This balm is the Word of God. We have the very medicine, yung, yung gamot na kailangan natin. We, all, we have always have, had it. This is the Word of God. But what we healing do we need today? We are looking forward for a generation after us. Pero ano po ba yung status ng generation natin today? Alam, can we uh, assess po natin anong healing ang kailangan ng generation natin ngayon? Do we have a healthy relationship, family relationship now? Or do we need healing? Sino po ba yung physician natin? There is a physician for us. Sa family, we have our parents. At kung ikaw yung anak, pero ikaw yung holder, ikaw yung bearer ng salita ng Panginoon, you are the physician. Does the church need healing? Our pastors, our leaders, we are the physician. They are the physician. And they are the ones who will lead us to the greatest physician. And that is the Lord. Na lahat ng sakit, kaya niyang pagilingin. He is our greatest physician. And actually, sa Jeremiah, if we will read, continue on reading sa mga susunod na chapters, though yung mga next kasi na magtuturo sa akin is Jeremiah, pa rin yung tuturo na. Pero, konting pa... Ang tawag dun? Spoiler alert. <laughs> for, sabi sa Jeremiah 30, 17, For I will restore health to you and heal you of your wounds, says the Lord. Because they called you an outcast, saying, This is Zion. No one seeks her. The Lord is still heals. For I will restore health to you, sabi niya, and heal your wounds. So Jesus promised restoration and healing to Israel. Yes, He heals. Nasa pag na lang nila rin. Sana. So does your spirit need healing today? Jesus heals. In our morning word and prayer, we have learned that, sabi ni Pastor, talagang ninote ko yun, when families are restored, communities, community is restored, the nation will be restored. And let me add, it starts from a single person. It starts from an individual. So it starts from you today. It starts from me today. Sabi mo nga, it starts from me today. Amen. So a church blessed for a thousand generations. Very futuristic. But going back to last week's conclusion, what we do now will greatly affect our future generation. It means we have to do something. Amen. We have to do something. And let me just share to you a short testimony on how God spoke to me with this word. Hindi ko alam kung um, paano. I'm not that good. The, uh, hindi ako magaling na speaker na talagang ma-absorb mo lahat. But I believe meron pong sariling pangusap ang Panginoon sa inyo. And in my way, in my study din sa salita ng Panginoon, actually, in, I have more time sa pag-aaral ng salita ng Panginoon na ito when I spend more, uh, more time na makipaghalubilaw sa aking family, sa, sa clan namin. Because through them, ay nangusap po ang Panginoon. And, basahin ko na lang po. So, while studying the next chapters of Jeremiah, nakasunod nung last week's teaching, nagkaroon po ako ng conviction to make a part two 
second part ng A Church Blessed for a Thousand Generations. But it was a struggle. Unlike si Sir Dave, hindi naman nag-confirm si Lord sa akin na merong generations na darating after me, susunod after me. And though, actually, kwento ko lang, nung nag-aaral pa ako, nung nag-aaral pa ako, parang ewan, nung nag-aaral pa ako, gusto ko nang magkaanak. Gusto ko kasing tumakas sa maraming bagay. At feeling ko, pag may sarili na akong pamilya at makakatayo ako sa sarili ko, ay matagumpay na ako. I am from a Christian family, but a very imperfect one, that I wanted to be away from them. That was how rebellious my heart was. Actually, hindi naman sila yung problema. Ako talaga yung problema. I was so rebellious. But by God's grace, hindi naman po nangyari. Hindi po ako nagkaanak ka bang nag-aaral. Though, kung nangyari man yun, naisip ko, I know everything will be fine. Will still be fine. Like every other unexpected pregnancies or ayun. Kasi, syempre, grace, grace lang Panginoon. But I also know and I am also aware that it is not as much fine and wonderful kung in God's perfect time. Nakatapos ako ng pag-aaral, tumanda, pero nawala yung excitement ko. I have learned na hindi biro ang magpamilya. Dagdag mo pa ang mga heartaches and fears. Mas nawala na. Even after the teaching last week, I cannot find the joy in my heart to have a generation after me. Actually, dumating na ako sa point to study about the gift of celibacy. And in the end, nalaman kong wala akong ganung gift. Hindi ako qualified. So nawala yung excitement and expectations ko dahil na din sa mga kasalanan ko noon. I am aware. Because I know that what I did might bring curse to the generation after me. Knowing I have made myself and my flesh my idol. And studying this teaching, it made me realize that from this, I must be healed from this fear. But first, I must totally forsake my idols. I must return to God with the right prayer, remembering His word and His judgment, to humble my proud self before Him. To totally surrender and let Him do the healing. God's message is so clear. He still heals. He still listens. He still sees. It's not yet too late for me. And so for you. We have a very big role for the generation to come. As a father, sa mga tatay, sa mga nanay, ate, Kuya, tita, tito, lolo, lola, the pastors, ministers, teachers, cell leaders, church members, listeners of God's word, and as a child of God. So today, let us choose to do what is right. Let us choose to return to God, to forsake our idols, and to humble ourselves sa Panginoon. Let us choose a family, a church blessed for a thousand generations. So it starts from us. Sabi ko dyan sa conclusion, don't just wait. Do something. For God still listens, God still answers. God still heals. And God sees. So there is a healing in the Lord if we only be sensitive. So let us start a new story and let, let us not follow the old wrong ways. Today, let's choose to be healed. Like how God has healed me through studying this word from Him. For there is healing and there is freedom. That is, if we surrender all to God. So today, I encourage every one of you to stand.
maging kayo na nasa mga bahay na. Stand on your feet now as a sign of your response sa Panginoon. Saying, God, I am willing to respond. I am willing to take a move. Today, this time, commune with the Lord and open your heart. Lord, ano pa bang hindi ko na isusuko sa iyo? Lord, am I humble enough before you? Or ask the Lord, Lord, saan ko kailangan ng kagalingan? Today, choose to be healed and choose to surrender. Choose to surrender to the Lord.
whatever is hindering you from giving it all to God, from giving your best to the Lord, and surrender it all now. Whatever you do not want the generation after you to receive or to suffer from, surrender it all now. after me with this prayer. Heavenly Father, I surrender once again everything in my life, everything in my heart. To you I entrust today's generation and the future generation. Turn to you, my God, and accept me once again as you cleanse me from all my iniquities. I accept you, Jesus, in my heart, and I surrender everything to you. Reign over my life, reign over my family, reign over the generations to come. Jesus name. Jesus. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day that you have given us. We thank you, God, for speaking once again to your people and for convicting us that we have a big, big part. We have a big, big role for the generations to come. Lord, we pray that all these convictions you have put in our hearts become in, into completion, my God, at sa aming pumahabuhay. That as we respond to your call to deny every idol, to return to you and to humble ourselves, Complete our joy, O oh God, to see the next generation praising and worshiping. Lord, today I pray for everyone who have received your word, O oh God, they may be strong in their faith in you, O oh God, and that, Lord, they will be used mightily by you, O oh God. That, Lord, everything na pangusap mo sa amin, Panginoon, may apply po namin sa aming mga buhay. Lord, today, I speak blessing upon your people. And as a messenger of your word today, oh God, Lord, I just want to bless them, to bless them with the everlasting blessing na nagmumula sa iyo, oh God. That Lord, not, for, not just for them, but even for their families, and even to the generations to come after them, oh God. 
Lord, we thank you for today. We thank you for your love. We thank you for everything, oh God. We glorify even as we go out from this place and as we end this service today, oh God. We thank you and we love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. To God be the glory, po. And so, this ends, that ends our service for today. Kita kins po tayo next week sa ating po ang Sunday service. God bless you. God bless you.